What's up, family members? And today, you're welcome to another edition of the King's Saving Holders Movement. Today, I'm going to be answering a question that a lot of people have been asking me all this why. They will be asking me, King, I want to know how you set your camera and stuff like that. What camera are you using and stuff like that? The first thing I want to tell you is that it doesn't matter the camera you're using. What matters is what you can do with it. And the settings I'm going to give you now, I think if you follow with any camera, it's going to give you the best of image you need. So let's go. Okay, so first of all, I'm using a Sony A7S Mark II. I bought this camera two years ago. So all the beautiful videos you see out there is done with this camera. Just to let you know that equipment should not be your limitations. You can do anything with any equipment. I've watched movies that have been shot with iPhones and took best movies in the world. Never you limit yourself because of equipment. Grab the little you can and make marvelous things with it. And that's where creativity comes in. So I'll give you two kind of settings. The way I set the camera when I'm shooting during the day and the way I set the camera when I'm shooting at night, especially when I'm shooting indoors or at night or any place with too much shadows. We have 4K. I usually put my camera on 4K and recording setting, I put my camera on 24p, 100 megabits per second. 24p, 100 megabits per second means it's shooting at 24 frames per second, which is very good for film looks. And 100 megabits per second is the highest uh, quality rate which the camera can give you, which means it has um, less compression, even though the compression is still too much. But then it's this is the highest you can get. Talking about the file format, when I want to shoot in slow motion, I usually shoot in HD because you can shoot up to 120 frames per second or 100 megabytes per second but the reason why I don't like to use this setting is because it produces a lot of noise and which is very difficult to remove in post so I always like to shoot uh, 60 make 60 frames per second and 50 mega at 50 megabytes per second the 60 frames per second is actually very good for slow motion too because it actually looks very real and organic so I like to use this under picture effect, you leave it at off. Picture profile, go to picture profile. I like to use a PP8 because um, it, act, it actually gives more uh, more great colors. So on the PP8, I'll leave the black level at zero. When I'm shooting at night or in a place with too much shadows, I always use Cine4. I always use Cine4. And when I'm shooting outdoor, I use S-Log2 or during the day, S-Log2 or any place with less shadows. I use S-Log2. The S-Log2 is really flat and it gives good um, dynamic range in which you can color grade. A lot of people use S-Log3 but I don't like to use S-Log3 because it comes out with a lot of noise which is kind of a little bit difficult to remove in post so I prefer the S-Log2. It also has a good dynamic range and it's good for color grading. Come over to the color mode and normally use um, the s mod Cine. It's a good profile tool for producing professional colors but I heard someone told me that I should start using pro it gives more professional colors so I will think I'll start I'll try using these two I don't know I've never used it before but let's see how it goes okay under the steady shot you have to click the steady shot on put it on and go to settings put it on manual so that you can just select Whatever lens you put on the camera, you can just select the lens and it's going to have your your steady shot adjusted so it doesn't, it doesn't shake too much when you're shooting. Zebra line, I normally don't use the zebra line because I already understand how to uh, expose the image correctly. But for you who are just starting, you definitely need to put the zebra line on and definitely you can put it on 70. Because most of the time these cameras always deceive you with zebra line when it's too much when it's too much the percentage like 85 or 90 so you want to put it on 70 for you just starting but I am a professional with this camera so I use I put it up off because I know how to set um, exposure correctly um, you can put the green lines on but before you put the green lines on you have to come over to marker display and put it on to go to marker setting 
Mm, there's this bar you see on my camera, this um, HD bar, the cinematic bar you see on my camera. It, I mostly see it on some monitors uh, and some red cameras too. Um, but Sony, Sony has it too in his camera, so it's good to compose your image correctly. That if you're shooting with the idea of putting this bar in post, so it's always good to put it. So to do that, you come over to marker setting, go to aspect, go to 2.35 ratio 1 and click on it. Then you're going to have it in your camera. Make sure you put this on on too. Um, on the APS-C Super 35 mm sensor, always make sure you keep it at on so that anytime you put a lens that um, it's an APS sensor lens, you you have it cropped already, especially when you're shooting in HD. When you're shooting in 4K, you always see the black stuff around the lens, but then when you're shooting in HD, you, it automatically crops the image for you, and it actually gives you the best quality because when you put it in, when you put it on off, you have a poor quality when you're shooting in HD. I actually noticed that when I was shooting an advert two years back, so it's always advisable to put it on on when you're shooting HD with a crop sensor lens. So, very advisable. This is where you format your SD card. You format your SD card here when you're done copying the images. Just format it right here. I always advise people not to take out not to take out the SD card of this camera often because you might spoil this, this stuff. So what I'm using is a 128 GB. Make sure you get a very high speed SD card like mine to record good images for 4K and good slow motion so I advise you to get something which is a little bit faster so you can get good images if not you have you run into some problems so basically that's how I set my Sony A7S Mark II for those who have any more questions you can run ahead and ask and I'm gonna answer your questions either with the text or a video tutorial mm, once again you're welcome to another King Savings World and Smooth Man you can follow me online, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter and the rest. Just ask any questions and I'm going to reply to you. Once again, you're welcome. Keep holding hands as we take another shot.